Similar to the normal force, the force of friction is also a contact force between two surfaces, except it is parallel to those surfaces. It is the product of the two variables, the normal force and the coefficient of friction. We learned that the normal force is how tightly two surfaces are squeezed into each other. Uh, the coefficient of friction is a value that depends on the surface material, um, uh, the material of the surfaces. So we have an equation for the force of friction, which is uh, force of friction is equal to mu times normal force. And we can practice or we can get a feel for the force of friction ourselves if we just put our hands together for, as a simple example. We can feel the sliding resistance, that parallel force against uh, our hands. In my case, it's a vertical force. And I can increase the force of friction by squeezing my hands tighter together. And now it's much more difficult to slide my hands against each other. Whereas if I decrease the normal force, now it becomes very easy to do so. So the coefficient of friction um, is represented by Greek letter mu. And uh, it is a value that um, tells you how easily it will be to slide the two surfaces together. Typically, the value is between 0 and 1, though there are coefficients of friction higher than 1. For materials such as uh, probably rubber on rubber, for example, the force of friction can be higher than the normal force. Uh, there is a different value for every pair of forces, and that's something to uh, focus in on. A coefficient of friction is not given for a single surface, it's always uh, for a pair of surfaces. And from the equation, uh, we can solve for mu, and we'll see that mu is actually a ratio between these two values, uh, which is also why the coefficient of friction has no unit. Right? So newtons in the numerator and the denominator cancel out, and so it has no units. There are also two types of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. We can say that static friction is when the two surfaces are not sliding against each other, whereas kinetic friction, the surfaces are sliding. And we'll demonstrate this with a simulation. So for the force of static friction, I can label this if I want to as force of friction static and use a static coefficient. Like in our example, we're going to use 0.4 for this object. And for kinetic friction, I can use lowercase k to represent the force of kinetic friction and the kinetic coefficient of friction. So I'm going to use a mass here that is 50 kilograms. And so to draw the free body diagram, this thing will have a a weight of 500 newtons and of course the normal force will balance it out and we have a normal force of 500 newtons so i'm doing this based on this simulation here where i have a 50 kilogram mass and we're going to see how the force of friction uh, varies between static and kinetic so in the examples on the left i'm going to have it so that a person is applying a force towards the right, like this. So this person is pushing with some applied force. So let's make it in the beginning that they're applying a force of maybe 20 newtons. If there is friction, uh, this box is not going to accelerate. The force of friction will, will balance out this applied force until the point where you exceed the force of static friction and the box will begin to accelerate. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the force of static friction here using this equation. So force of static friction is mu static times normal force. The static coefficient that we have in this simulation is 0.4. So this is going to be 0 0.4. 0 0.4 multiplied by the normal force, which is 500 newtons. And this is going to give us a value of uh, 200 newtons. So I can't just draw that force vector here because 200 newtons is the maximum force of friction that we'll have before the box begins to slide. So I'm going to represent it here as a dotted line as our maximum value. Force of friction max will be 200 newtons. And it's going to apply for all these examples. In all these examples, this box is not sliding. So I'm going to do that for all of these examples. If we exceed this 200 Newton force, the box will begin to slide. 
So in the first example, the actual force of friction is actually just equal to the applied force. So here it will be equal to the force of friction is equal to 20 newtons. So in most cases, we don't actually use the force of, uh, we don't use the equation for the force of static friction to solve for the force of friction. We can solve for it based on uh, the context of the problem. So what if this person were to apply an even larger force? So they push here, instead of, instead of with 20 newtons, they apply a force of maybe applied force of 60 newtons. Well, the force of friction, that's not enough force to get the box to slide. So the force of friction is going to just balance it out. And we get a force of friction of 60 newtons. We keep increasing that force. Maybe this person now pushes with a force of um, 180 newtons. So they're really close to that maximum force of static friction, but the box will still not slide because it's less than that maximum value. So the force of friction here is still 180 newtons. And only when the person applies a force equal to or greater than that maximum value will the box begin to slide. So if we apply um, we apply a force of 200 newtons, then this box will begin to slide and the friction will turn into kinetic friction um, shown here. So in this example, I'm going to indicate the velocity with which the object is moving. Let's say it starts off moving very slowly. So maybe here the velocity is only two meters per second. And here, let's say it gets faster and the velocity is eight meters per second. And then it's moving really fast here. So the velocity may be 20 meters per second. And here it's moving at its maximum speed let's say 40 meters per second, maximum speed in the simulation. What are the values for the force of friction in all these examples? Well, the box is sliding against the surface, so we can actually just use the equation here. This time the equation actually will give us the correct value because there's only one value for the force of kinetic friction. So in this case, mu is 0.3. So 0 0.3 for the coefficient of friction multiplied by 500 newtons which is our normal force, and we should get 150 newtons. 150 newtons here. 150 newtons here. And even if there was somebody um, here running along with the box somehow at this velocity and pushing with any applied force, maybe let's, let's make this 50 newtons of applied force, um, it does not uh, influence the force of kinetic friction, this will still just be 150 newtons. And we're going to show that now on the simulation. So here's our box stationary, and I'm going to show that as long as I apply a force less than less than 200, the box will not accelerate. So I'm dragging this vector across, and as long as I stay below 200, there's no acceleration. I'm going to increase it here in increments of 50 newtons with this button. So I have 50 newtons applied force. The force of friction immediately is 50 newtons to balance it out. This person is not applying enough force to accelerate the box. I apply 100 newtons, does not accelerate. 150 does not accelerate. And then I'm going to go to 200. And if I just add one more newton of force, the box begins to accelerate. And we can see here the speed of the box is changing, but the force of friction is a constant 150. And even if I increase the applied force here to 251 or to 250, 300, that's not going to change the force of kinetic friction. It's still 150 the entire time. And even if there is no force, that's still 150. We can even apply a force in the opposite direction like this, and the force of friction is still 150. So, so, so long as the box is sliding against the surface, the force of kinetic friction will be 150. But then if we stop the box, uh, now we're back to having a force of static friction where the box will not slide unless I see that uh, 200 value. And I think that's it.